I've literally just filmed my fall polishes in this exact setup and I think these videos go up like back to back so sorry about the same setup hopefully it's not boring to you guys I didn't want to reset up everything in a different spot when I'm literally just turning the camera right back on So every now and then I kind of like to go through the Topic Tuesday prompts and put them into one video. I don't do every week necessarily just because sometimes I'm not interested in them. So I'll usually do one video a month with a handful of topics. So the first prompt is a popular mani tip you don't do and why. Um, I don't like cap my free edge with my polish I do with my top coat but that's mostly just like it's like a automatic thing I don't really think about it but as far as the polish goes I just don't think that it does a lot for me I don't wear the polish long enough for that to kind of help um I can see if you're wearing your polish for like a few days or a week or whatever that it would help but I just don't take the time to do it um I probably should I'm sure that it would help if I was wearing my polish but if I'm doing a base coat and like a, a nice polish with a good formula and a top coat I don't usually have chipping problems the next question is three polishes that you would bring on a holiday and I have picked three obviously this first one I haven't actually worn I just got it but this is like my color this is I mean I buy this color in almost everything that I can find um but this is i'm out of here and <laughs> perfect for a vacation but it's just like a really bright teal and it's got a good formula which is something i look for when i take polishes on vacation because i don't want to be wasting time like um working with crap formulas basically but so that's the first one a nice kind of bright teal color the next one, I like to do a white or like an off-white of some sort. So this is OPI Susie Chase's Portuguese. If you guys know of a dupe for this, please let me know because you know that I am no longer purchasing non-cruelty-free brands. So um, I can't repurchase this and I would love a kind of dupe of this, but it is a really nice polish nonetheless. So I would bring something probably like this. And this is something that's recent to me, um, but this is Nail Addict Gel Polish in Kiss Me Now. And this is a really beautiful holographic, like kind of silvery polish. And recently we did like a long weekend trip where we did like some hiking and stuff. And I did a peel off base with one of the Nail Addict polishes. And I really liked having that like security because on vacation, I feel like you always break a nail. So I really liked having the security of like a gel polish, but not being so committed because I had that peel off base. Um, and the base works great. You can just, you literally just peel it right off and it's wonderful. Um, so I've been liking doing gel polishes, especially for like long weekend trips where we're going to be packing a bunch in because we only have a couple days and I just don't want to worry about painting my nails. The gel polish worked so well for our little long weekend. Okay, the next one I picked is would you rather have hollow toppers or flaky toppers? And this one is really hard for me because I I don't like toppers. Um, I don't hardly ever use them. Like I don't put them over anything or do anything with them really. So I struggle with that. Um, but <laughs> I think, I think I would rather have flakies. I like the little like shard kind of glittery flake look, not over hollow, but I think just a little bit more than hollow. I think that I would use a flaky topper more if that was my only like option to use something. Okay, the next question or prompt, I guess, is advice you would give yourself in early collecting. Um... When I first started this, I really did not have money. Like when I first started just like my hobby of nail polish, I really did not have money to be buying new collections and all these new releases. And um, around when I was like deep into it, like I was in and I had my Instagram, it was when the KL polish was really big. And I remember like literally putting those collections on my credit card that I didn't have hardly any credit left on. And it was just not worth it. Um, some of the polishes obviously were really nice and I loved them. But at the end of the day, 
it's not worth like being worried about. I think that now a few years later, I do have a little bit more like flexible income to be able to buy things. And I find myself, I buy a lot, don't get me wrong, but I find myself not feeling like I need every new collection or I missing out on something. I think that I did a video on like consumerism. It was a tag from Jessica Braun. So I will link that for you guys. But I think that it's just, you, you just have to know that somewhere someone will have swatches so you can see them and make sure that you look at swatches before you buy anything. Because I think that brands put out so much and then you're like, oh, let me buy this right now. And they haven't even posted swatches or done their campaign for it. And you don't even know what they look like. Um, and so I would just wait, wait a little bit, see what people say. I mean, you could go on and find 17 different people that have swatched that collection and see all the different variants with skin tone and lighting and everything. And you might not end up liking it. That's something that I have um, kind of like gone into is, I wait for a little bit, like I said, and look for swatches from a lot of different people, like at least six to 10 people and see what they say about it and see how their lighting and how their skin tone and everything looks with it to see if it's even something that is worth it. Because a lot of times I'm like, that's beautiful. And then I look and I'm like, I have something similar or it looked really weird when that picture was posted. Um, and it's just nice to see the differences. So I would say don't jump on everything or feel like you're missing out if you can't buy something because chances are it's dupable and you'll find it somewhere else. And then the other thing is someone else will have it. Like it's not like if you can't buy it, then no one else will be able to share it or you won't be able to look at it. Um, I think that may be like more of a swatcher thing. I don't know. I just think that it's not worth it to jump into like debt over buying polish. I am definitely going to leave that consumer video down below. I think that it was a good video and I think that people would enjoy it, um, especially kind of piggybacking off of that last topic. So check that out if you want to. I will leave it in the description box. There's always so many things in the description box. Um, there's um, discount codes and my Amazon storefront where I have literally all of my Amazon favorites from nail to life to travel. All of those things are always linked down below. The Amazon and Dimension Nails codes or like links are affiliate links. So I'll get a little bit of commission if you purchase from those. Um, but yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a like and all of the subscribes and all of that. Um, I'm trying to be better about saying that because I've been looking at my analytics and apparently half of you guys are pretty much just watching without subscribing, which... Um, I hear a lot on my Instagram that people are missing my content, even being following me. So at least if you're subscribed, it gives you a better chance of seeing things. Um, but yeah, if you're interested in seeing more of my crazy nail things, you can check out my Instagram. Um, I'm working on posting three videos a week over here on YouTube. So doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday now, if you have not seen that little update and I think that's it. I'm going to stop talking now. I hope you guys have a great week or day and I will see you in the next video.